Ace Team and here doing the junkyard crawl with a twist. This is the big Olds barn. Get it? It's an old barn, but it's full of Oldsmobiles. We're in Palmer, Massachusetts, and we'll take a break from Burns and Auto Reckon for a couple of days to explore the cool Oldsmobile products in that barn. Everyone loves a barn find. Let's dig in. As we continue our little exploration in the, the big olds barn. This uh, bay is dedicated to uh, suspension parts and, uh, and various other goodies. And well, right here, ladies and gentlemen from Los Angeles, California, the doors right here. Jim Morrison, Ray Manzarek, Robbie Krieger, John Densmore, all right here. They're kind of quiet, but that's okay. Anyway. Hubcaps, look at this, Hudson Terraplane. It's not an Oldsmobile, but this is an old school 1930s hubcap. Would have been on a wheel, a wire wheel. The Terraplane 6, reminds me of the Grateful Dead Terraplane Station, Terrapin Station, Terrapin Station. Plymouth, right here, these are old hubcaps from the day. Kind of nifty, kind of cool. But as we go in here deeper, yeah, just wherever you look, weird stuff. This is an exhaust manifold. Looks short, like from a V6 or something like that, right? Well, no. The old 330 through 455 had a very compact exhaust port layout. The outsides and the centers were close together. So this is actually from the old 330 through 455, including the 403. Very short little manifold compared to like a typical full length. But again, this is not a V6 manifold. It's from an old uh, final generation V8. Something interesting here, another old, yeah, this is definitely another Oldsmobile exhaust manifold. Again, we see the Siamese centers. And again, the cylinder head had ports that were pretty good. But again, the manifold had a big wide open party spot in the middle. But this is kind of weird. Look at this. It has two outlets, one here and one there. Now, ordinarily, this would be probably on a car with a single exhaust pipe, the Y pipe. But this is absolutely, that is a block off plate right there. So it's possible this was used on either a dual exhaust car where there was no underpan Y pipe, or maybe this is from Toronado. I'm not sure. But with that said, what a weird thing. Two outlets on an exhaust manifold. You saw it here first, folks. Let's make our way inside here. And getting back to Toronado, these are part of the Toronado's front wheel drive. These are the the spindles from up front. This is where the drive shaft would come in from the Turbo 425 uh, transaxle on the front wheel drive Toronado. Full floating hubs, but again, you can see right there it's spline for the axle shaft to come through. And again, these are integral right here. They bolt on, but the bearings and stuff are in here. And this is a driven front spindle compared to a non-driven spindle like on a 98, a Cutlass, whatever else it might be. Again, there's no front drive on this thing at all. Interesting stuff. Just. Things that don't speak, give them a voice. All right, let's head into the Maw. And here we see a bit of Oldsmobile drum brake history. Uh, again, anytime you see these, you're talking about Toronado stuff. Right here, the fin, big aluminum drum, or uh, steel drums, but again, they're 11 inches, and the fins on them help them to dissipate heat. Uh, more traditional cutlass stuff here. These are stamped steel. These are not castings. Uh, the outer is a casting, I guess, but the middle is welded in. Lightweight stuff, again, for the back of a, uh, a cutlass, a smaller car. Full-sized Oldsmobile right here. Once again, up front, massive drum, but with this weird hat. What's, what's up with that? Well, this actually is a heat sink that would live outside the rim. The tire would be here. This actually is out in the airstream where cooling air would blow past it and help to dissipate the heat. So again, drum brakes, not just one size fits all. There's all kinds. More doors from uh, Los Angeles, playing at the Whiskey tomorrow. <laughs> Axle shafts right here. And differential center sections, these things right here, are kind of interesting. Now, a lot of people focus on the engine, the transmission, but you gotta remember the rear axle, without that, you got nothing. This is a Chevy, 1955 upward. This would have about an eight inch ring gear, typical Chevrolet stuff. If you see the letter P right there, it's a posi case, which means it's machined specifically to take a posi unit. But this is Chevy right here, moving on up. Oldsmobile had a much larger case. We can see it here. Oldsmobile physically a larger car, more torque, bigger engines, V8 power. So again, Oldsmobile had even bigger ring gears and related parts than Chevy. And even Oldsmobile went from size to size. I think it was 58 
when this monster Oldsmobile came out, <clears throat> and when you find these things with a posi, not here, we can put your finger inside, that's an open diff, but these things here were big with, with drag racers. If you read Hot Rodder Carcraft, you know, Don Garlitz, they say he used a, an old Pontiac slash slash rear axle. This is what they're talking about. Big ring gear, I think it's nine, nine and a quarter inch diameter, pretty big stuff, strong, especially with the Eaton Limited Slip, very, very cool and rare. And this thing here, Buick, crazy but true, Buick had their own differential, this monster right here. You might say, well, it's the same thing. Well, not really. If you look at it, it's kind of flat and weird. This is Buick's torque tube. This flat plate right here would take a bolt-on tube, which would have a drive shaft inside, but there'd be a steel tube that would go all the way up to the back of the transmission on this torque tube Buick, and this would then uh, be Buick's specific rear differential. So not the same as an Olds or a Pontiac or a Chevy or even Cadillac. Buick had their own weird thing going on with torque tubes you know, up till 1961 or two. And for comparison, this is out of probably uh, Nash Metropolitan, I would say. Tiny little thing, kind of cute in a weird way, but I have a feeling, I think I know why Warren D kept this one. This is a limited slip. You can see right there the clutch unit inside of that thing. Uh, kind of cool. You look inside, little clutches inside. This might have been from like a, uh, maybe a, a British sports car, an MG, perhaps Austin, but I know that the uh, the Nash Metropolitan used a similar diff. I'm going to bet that's what that is, but it's funny. If you look, the size of the ring gears on these things, you know, I mean, how different could these things be? Holy smokes, right? And as we continue our little exploration, you know, as much as I like to fixate on metal and frames and transmissions, we can't forget glass, you know? 1950s was really a revolutionary time for the curved window. This is a back window, I'm going to say right here, from some vehicle tinted right there, the blue, which might indicate this was from an air-conditioned car starting in like 1950 or so. Air conditioning becomes more and more prevalent. And again, with clear glass and an air-conditioned car, you lose about 20% of the air conditioner's effectiveness. So tinted windows help to keep the car cooler, let the air conditioner do its job better. So that might have been in an air-conditioned car. And again, wrapped glass like this, PPG, Pittsburgh plate glass was one of the major suppliers. Uh, Libby, Owens Corning, LOF, whatever it is, another supplier. But look at these, what a beautiful thing. This is a stack of curved windshields from 57, maybe 58 um, GM products for sure. And there's like four of them right here. And on this one, we can see something kind of neat. There's an inspection sticker right there. Let me try and read this without breaking this and buying this. I don't want to buy this piece of glass. It's probably not cheap. And it is, well, Let's see, Massachusetts, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I don't see a year from where I'm at, but look at that, the old inspection sticker right there. But again, this one is not tinted. Again, tinted wraparound windshields or even rarer, again, associated mostly with, uh, with air-conditioned cars. But keep in mind, <clears throat> this is a private stash of stuff we have here, and everything here is for sale. You know, I'm not in the middle of it in any way, shape, or form, but uh, as uh, Mike D you know, liquidates his father's holdings and stuff, if you want to buy anything you've seen in any of these videos, by all means, reach out to Mike D through the email address in this video. And if you like this video, be sure to share it with your friends, give us a thumbs up, a like, and uh, hit ring the bell so that you're aware of the next video which comes out tomorrow morning.